welcoming you to our paint party. Um, if this is your first time attending, it should take about an hour. I'm gonna take you through the um, steps one by one. It's a very simple design with really nice bright colors that pop in contrast to one another. So we're gonna be coating the entire surface of the canvas to get started. And um, I'm gonna give you instruction on how to do it. And if you make mistakes, once the paint is dry, you can go back over and correct spaces or spots or areas that you're not happy with. I'm gonna try my best to stay um, off to the side so that you'll just basically be seeing the canvas and what we're working on. In front of you, you should have your paper plate, your little cups of paint, you can take the lids off now. You wanna make sure that your water cup is filled. Um, we're gonna start with brown and I am gonna recommend that you step away from your painting and wash the brush out in the sink after we've done the brown. If you wash the brush out in your water cup, very likely um, that will tint your brush when we try to clean it in between the other colors. So we'll step away and that'll give um, our base coat a little bit of a chance to dry. <laughs> so the first thing I'm gonna do is use the white cup, which you'll see there's more. Oh, there and I'm gonna like a, like a shovel and put some white onto the paper plate. And I'm gonna brush the extra off right onto the canvas. Pardon me. And I'm gonna dip my brush. Into I'm sorry, I can't I can't hear you. There's a lot of background noise. So um that's just a moment. We'll see if we can correct here. Oops. Is that better? Okay, that, seems, that seems to be much better. Thank you. So I put a scoop of white onto my plate and then I put the brown next to it. And basically I'm going to just start brushing back and forth. And I'm going to plan to have the top part of the canvas present lighter than the bottom. So I'm going to put a little bit of white on. I'm scooping it up with my brush and I'm using the big thick one inch brush. We got chip brushes for this time. And then every now and then I'll go in and I'll touch my brush onto the ground and scrub that in. Let me show you your palette again. Just so I just have a little bit of white and a touch of the brown. We're only using four colors. We have uh, orange, obviously, for our pumpkin. And then we wanted to do a nice pop of color, so we went with uh, turquoise. And the brown that we're using today is burnt umber. Um, there's also raw umber. That's a little more um, deep. I'm also, and every time I do a, a canvas painting, I go along the edges and I paint them as well. So I'm gonna keep scooping some brown and white onto the canvas. I'm gonna end up where my bottom of my canvas is darker. Right now, I'm just gonna go around my edges and you can drag the brush sideways. You can stroke it across the canvas like this. But if we cover our sides, that eliminates the need for framing artwork to put it up onto the wall. It's a nice, quick and um, cheap way to have your paintings look finished without including the cost of framing. If you've ever gone to a frame shop, it can be very expensive to frame uh, prints and paintings. So this is a nice, simple solution. And it doesn't take that. And you can kind of hear that I'm scrubbing. So I'm not necessarily always stroking. Um, we want a little bit of like a tactile look in the background. And that's achieved easily by just taking your brush and scrubbing or scraping it. And I'm just gonna keep that in the color until I have all four sides. And then I'll focus a little bit more on the surface. Yeah. 
So that's all he needs is to clear and let it, and just tell them that he, that he would prefer evening class. So they're supposed to be doing one of them. Are there any questions? No, okay. I just muted because I was okay. So you can sit your canvas sideways to get to your top and bottom. And you can sit it down. If you're working flat and don't have an easel, you can just alternate it around. Hopefully you put some newspaper or an old linen um, sheet or something like that underneath. And I'm just gonna keep working on filling in the entire background of the canvas. I'm not really wetting my brush too much with water. When I did this, um, we applied it rather quickly and um, we don't want it to be too wet because we are going to be painting directly on top of it. And if you make it too wet, it's gonna take a lot longer for it to dry. So you can see there's not a specific direction. I'm just, boldly going on with the brown. And then if it looks too dark, throwing in a little white. I will say it is easier to darken with acrylic paints than it is to lighten. So you don't want to start off so dark that you have to use a ton of white to lighten it up. You want to build up your color as opposed to try and lighten your color. And I kind of like this brown, it has a red undertone. So I think it's a, like a very rich, beautiful shade of brown. And it goes really nice with accent in the pumpkin and the stem when we're all done. How's everybody doing? We want to cover all of the canvas. One of the things I think that can detract from having a nice finished look is if you can see the texture of the canvas through the painting. So um, you want to make sure that you've applied the paint thick enough. In this area here, the canvas is bleeding through. So I'm going to make sure I scrub in and you don't see canvas showing through. And you should have plenty of brown when we're done left to do the accents and details on the pumpkins. Um, we gave everybody enough that that shouldn't be an issue. If we were here and painting together as a group, if people were running low on a color, we have library staff who could quickly come over and give you some more. But because we're um, still trying to do our programming virtually, we have to do our best to measure in advance and make sure we have what we need. So I've just created and left it streaky. Um, a real rough look. It looks a lot darker when we lose some of the overhead lighting, but you can see I left the bottom part here darker and the edges are slightly darker and I had the center remain um, on the light side. So is everybody caught up to painting in the background or shall we get a couple minutes for people to finish? I'm going to step away now and I'm going to go take my little chip brush and rinse it real good and a sink to get the brown paint out.
All right, we're going to keep moving along. If anybody joins in, um, I'll reiterate some of the steps so that people don't feel completely left behind. We started by putting some white onto our plate, scrubbing the white um, along the edges and around the top. And then we used the burnt umber and we mixed it on our palette, not a whole lot of brown into the white and just started scrubbing. We've gone all the way around all four edges so that it's finished if you were to hang it on the wall. All right. I'm going to use a paper plate and I'm going to kind of fan my piece to try and dry the surface where we're going to start to put the pumpkins in. And we didn't use a template. Pumpkins are amorphous and round and not all the same shape. So if your pumpkin is fat and squat, that's okay. And if it's long and lean, that's okay. There's no, um, there's no wrong way to do the pumpkin. I'm going to use the orange, put it onto my palette, just so I can dab in. It's very thick. And I'm going to start with just pure orange without mixing any color. And what I want to do is I'm going to make the shape of the outline of it. If it drags in some brown, don't panic because we're going to go over. But I'm going to try to keep about an inch to an inch and a half from the bottom. And I'm just marking it like this. I'm going to do the same thing here and just kind of mark with my brush a gauge. It's about, I would say, a little more than a quarter of the way up. The bottom one is going to be the largest. And I'm just holding my chip brush sideways and kind of using it like a pencil to draw. I'm staying between a half an inch and an inch from the side. Step back and look and make sure you look like you're centering your pumpkin. And I'm just locking it in like this and then stroking with my brush straight to start to fill in. I'm not defining the top area here because we're going to need some space to put the blue overlapping and coming down and we can always go back in and fill it. So I'm really just, I used the side of the paintbrush with some orange to create my edge. And now I'm using the brush flat against the canvas to create the inside of the pumpkin's shape. And you can notice you can make a little bump around the center and then you can pull up like this and delineate the ridges on each side. And your pumpkin can have more than three. It could have four or five different shapes and we'll detail that and block it in with brown once this has dried down some. You wanna make your pull of the orange go from top to bottom. You don't want to be going side to side. One of the things that will help show the shape of the pumpkin is these nice, broad, confident strokes. I don't think mine looks 100% centered. I'm going to bring this one over just a little bit like that. And I'm going to make sure I do the same here to clarify where the edges of my orange pumpkin start and stop. And that's how I'm blocking this in for now. And you can see some of the brown coming through and that's perfect. We want to have some of that, okay? We're going to mix blue on top of our orange pumpkin. We're going to put white on top of our orange pumpkin and we're going to do the same with the other pumpkins and have colors mix in. So I kind of left the top really jaggedy. You can see where the brush strokes are and I'm going to leave it like that because now I'm going to get ready to put my blue pumpkin in. At this point, you can use the water cup that we supplied you with and rinse your brush and get the orange out of your brush that way. The reason I said to go to your sink to clean the brown out is because it's such a strong color. We didn't want it to overpower the other colors as we lay them on. So you should have some paper towels. You want to blot your brush after you put it in water. You don't want to have it be really drippy. You can see there's still some orange in my brush and that's okay. I'm going to rotate my palette now and I'm going to put some of the turquoise 
onto the palette. And I'm using my, my brush, sort of like a shovel, scooping it up. It is a water-based paint. And if you wash it out of your clothing immediately, it will come right out. And if you get it on your carpet, if you use soap and water and clean it right away, it will come right out. And if you get it on your hands, you can wash it off at any time. So I'm going to do my second pumpkin, and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make it slightly smaller. So if I extend it on my sides here between a half inch and an inch, I'm going to make this one a little smaller and bring it around. And I'm just it so I feel like I'm equal on both sides. So I'm a little bit further over here. And just kind of like you had a pencil, you're just drawing down and putting in some of the teal. And you can see it, it's going right over the ground, nice and dark. We're not mixing any colors in with it right now. We're just putting it on as a solid, undiluted, unmixed, beautiful, gorgeous turquoise blue. And I keep eyeballing how close I am on this side versus this side, tending to need to go a little bit more here. And I'm just pulling my brush straight up and down or in a curve because the curve will show through when we are done. You'll, it'll help add to the volume, this bubbly look of the pumpkin. Now at the bottom, I'm going to create three spaces at the bottom where I dig down into the orange and I kind of curve my pumpkin like this. And then I'm going to build out around the sides like that. Give it its pumpkin-y, wordy kind of shape. And we'll have some space in between where we'll go back later and, you know, fill in a little bit more with the orange so that the base looks clean. One of the tips I can recommend is when you've gotten this far along, it's not a bad idea to step away from your painting and have a, a view to see how it's filling in on the canvas. Sometimes if you're up close, you're too close to see where you might need to make some shifts and changes. So I'm just kind of stroking my brush over like this and making my pumpkin look round and full. And again, I'm leaving the top area open because I'm gonna to have to drop my white pumpkin and I need a little bit of room at the top for the stem, okay? If you get too close to the top and you don't have room for the stem, you could always have your stem curl down and have it look like, um, more like a vine coming off the top, okay? So it's gonna be important to get as much of this turquoise out of your brush as possible now so that we can go to the white. Does anybody have any questions? You can always type something in the chat if you um, need, need some advice or encouragement or you need me to review a step. So again, I wet my brush and I want to pull as much moisture out of the brush and see that I get the color off. I still see blue in my brush. So I might put it back in my cup again and try and get some of the blue out. And I'm blotting it with a paper towel to make sure it's not going to be running. My next step is my white pumpkin. And I'm not going to be dipping my brush in and out of the white because if you were to dip in and start painting, you could drag other colors in. So I'm always going to scoop and put some onto the paper plate. And once I have it on the paper plate, then I can go ahead and block in my, my top little baby pumpkin. And I don't want it to be as big as the blue one. So you're going to step back, eyeball it, and I'm just kind of pulling in and making it nice and round. And if some of the blue from the bottom one gets pulled up in, that's okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my white one that I did with my blue, I'm trying to make it three shapes. So I'm curving here, and then I'm gonna have a little bump come down. 
And I'm just going to define the bottom of the white one. So you should see a little bump where you're going to have a line. And that's going to give me an indication of where I will pull up. You see, I can go like this and kind of mark out where there's going to be lines in the pumpkin when we're ready. So this is my white pumpkin. I'm a little closer to my top than I was in the sample pane, but I'm not too worried. I'll just put my stem in and over. And I'm going to have white on my brush that I'm now going to go in and stroke in a couple spots on my orange pumpkin. You can kind of give a highlight to the different um, sections of your pumpkin, follow the lines that you put along the bottom. And you'll see if you curve your brush, kind of rocking it back and forth, that's giving my pumpkin like a, a, a very full round look. You don't want to cover the whole thing. And then I'm just going to kind of blot my brush off on my palette and get some of the paint off. And now I'm going to do a little bit of white from my palette and do the same thing with my blue pumpkin. I'm going to indicate some of the curves. And by rocking your brush back and forth, that helps like show the roundness of the pumpkin. You wanna make your strokes confidently from top to bottom whenever you can. Okay, so I have that locked in. A little bit more. Okay. We can always go back in with our detail brush when we're done. I'm going to do the same thing, scribble my brush off a little here, and then I'm going to touch the corner of my brush, just the corner like this, into the brown. If you have too much on your brush, use your palette and wipe it off. And I'm gonna just very lightly mark with the brown and pulling a lot of blue in there. Ribs on the top. All right. I'm gonna stop now using my chip brush. I'm gonna put that in the water so it stays good. The brushes that we provided you with are yours to keep, but you want to take good care of them. You want to wash them and dry them when we're done working. If you leave paint in the brush thinking you'll get back to it later, you will not be able to use the brush later. I have on my plate still some orange from when we were painting, and I'm going to use a small angle brush to go in and go right up along the edges, and I'm going to fill in wherever there's a little bit of an edge underneath the blue where we kind of left it so that we could figure out where the blue began and the orange ended. And I'm just pulling down and cleaning up the edges so you don't see any of your background color coming through. You can also at this time use your orange to create a little bit of shading around the edges. You don't have to have really, really bold shading. It's subtle and nice seeing the different bright orange versus the whitewash orange. And I'm just kind of working it in in a couple spots so that there's a nice pop of solid clear orange. And again, I'm kind of pulling my brush in a curving rocking motion. So that's what I've done with the orange. And I'm going to clean my brush and kind of do the same thing with the blue. Again, each time you clean your brush in a water cup, you want to take your paper towel and pull the water and the other colors out. And I'm going to go into my blue pumpkin. And up at the top here, I have some areas where I didn't fill in because I was waiting to block in my white pumpkin. So I'm going to use this time now with my angle brush to go in and just fill in those spaces 
And I typically put my brush up against the edge of the white and pull down. And that gives you a pretty clean line. And I'm just cleaning up so that my white pumpkin is not floating, but is sitting on my purpose pumpkin. And then I'm going to do the same thing. You should have plenty of turquoise in your cup. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to kind of shade around the curves of the sections of the pumpkin. So I'm pulling a nice bright turquoise blue up in a couple areas. Make sure the edges of your pumpkin don't look jaggedy. If you turn an angle brush sideways, it becomes like a fine detail brush and you can just pull it and have that give you a cleaner edge. One of my favorite things about an angle brush, it can be broad when you have it flat and then it can be very detailed when you have it on its side. So I feel like I have, um, enough of the teal locked in. I'm going to wash my brush out again. And at this point, I'm actually going to finish the top of my white pumpkin by putting on the stem. And for that, I'm gonna use brown and I'm just gonna draw if you rock back and forth at the top, that can make the base of the stem. And then I'm going to have my stem just go like this. Okay, close to the top. You don't really want to go all the way at the top. And it's nice if your stem is a little wide at the end or has a little hook, has a little bit of character. And I'm just blocking it in. If you want to make it jaggedy, you can do that. So it looks like it's holding on and clasped onto the pumpkin. And now I'm going to continue working with the brown and I'm going to take my angle brush and stroke it back and forth so there's no lumps on the edge of the brush. You want it to be nice and clean and clear. And that's how I'm going to start to put a little more definition on my pumpkins. I'm going to do a line where the pumpkin curves. I'm going to grab some more of this brown. You want to make sure before you go to do your definition lines that there's no lumps. Check your brush and make sure it doesn't look bumpy. And I'm going to stroke from top to bottom to show the curves. And I'm going to highlight that when we're done. But right now I'm just blocking in using the brown and I'm kind of going, not the whole top to bottom, in some areas in the middle and some along the bottom. You don't want to have every one of your lines on your pumpkins starting here and ending here. You want to leave some a little broken so that it looks a little more natural and not um, like a, a coloring uh, page draw. All right, I am gonna add another line right here. And I, I think I'm gonna stop there on my orange one. So I'm okay. I'm gonna put a little bit of brown shading across the bottom like this. And I'm just, again, curving up all right, and that's the base of my orange pumpkin. And then I'm gonna use the brown. Again, check in between each time, make sure there's no lumps and bumps on your brush. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on the turquoise pumpkin. You can see I'm starting where the curve is at the bottom here and I'm pulling up. And I'm gonna do that in a couple spots. I'm gonna do the outside edge here. 
I'm going to do the middle on this side here where I'm not starting all the way at the bottom. And I'm just pulling up. And then I think I want to have another one curve like this. Okay. Um, I might do a little bit up here. Every now and then I look at my brush and I can see lumps. And if you have a lump on your brush when you go to commit, it's going to show up. So you want to do your best to keep it clear. All right. So you put a little extra gravel on the bottom of each pumpkin that gives it weight at the bottom, makes it look like it's being held down because of its weight and natural curve of the pumpkin. I'm going to do the same thing now up at the top on my white pumpkin. I'm going to start at the bottom and curve up like this. And then I'm going to go over to the side and do it again. And I'm going to do a little line here. And I'm going to pull from the top here, just a little shade. And I can always lighten it up if it got too dark. That might be a little too dark for me. And then I'm going to do the same thing on my outer edge here. I'm going to scrape some of the ground off my palette like this, off my brush, and I'm going to go in here and lighten this up just a tad. That doesn't have to have to do that. Okay. So we've kind of broken up each of our pumpkins. And now we're going to be playful with them and we're going to add the contrasting colors to one another. So I'm actually going to, and I'm not cleaning my brush anymore. I'm just kind of wiping any excess paint. It's not as imperative at this point that you have a purely clean brush. I'm going to use some of the orange and I'm going to very sparingly accent the turquoise pumpkin with some orange, just a little stroke here and there. You don't want to make it look like it's overpowering or um, being the dominant color, but a little bit of orange on your turquoise is going to be a nice fun splash. I want this just a little bit brighter as it goes up. And I'm going to put some orange on my white pumpkin too. Be very careful with the white pumpkin because it's so white. You want it to be uh, an accent, not over the top. Patch here. And here. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my orange pumpkin. I'm going to go in and put some turquoise. I'm taking excess paint off on a paper towel, grabbing some turquoise, and I'm going to do a little touch here. And here. And, and then maybe a little in here. All right, so it's not overpowering or distracting. So that's my turquoise in my orange and my orange in my turquoise. It's like you've got the chocolate in my peanut butter. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of turquoise up in here. I haven't done that yet. And you can always go back in and Soften things up if you think it went too bright, too fast. Okay. And we have no white in our orange. Let's do a little bit of white in the orange. Just do a tiny bit of that here. And you want to be light with your strokes. Okay, so we've mixed it up. I'm going to do the same thing with my background now. I'm going to put a little bit of turquoise 
along the background. Kind of brush it in in different spots. You can remember your sides and throw a little bit of color on the sides because if it's hanging on your wall, you will see that. And you can do the same with the orange. You want to be just a slight stroke here and there. Don't have a ton of paint on your brush. Just have a little bit of the color on the brush and kind of like whisper it across the canvas where you're really just putting a little bit of splash. I'm gonna put a little more dark brown around the bottom here because I want the bottom of the canvas to look like there's more weight there. And I'm just literally scrubbing color on. Okay. I'm going to go back up and play around a little bit with my stem. Right now, my stem is just a solid brown, and I'm going to use a little bit of white to put a little bit of definition in there. Just like this. So it's not just a solid brown. Move it down so you can see it. So I just put a little bit of a line here and drag a little. There we go. I even put a little bit of white along there just to give it a highlight. And then the last thing that I did for this was I used my angled brush and I just very lightly put a little bit of like a, a confetti kind of, I do groupings of three. And I just use the very tip of the brush with white paint. You don't have to do this, or you could do this with the teal, or the, I'm sorry, the turquoise, or the orange. And I just kind of created like a, a sprinkle as though somebody flicked some glitter. And I just go around and randomly put a couple little dots here and there. And they don't always have to be in a group of three. Sometimes it's nice to have a single one or a double dot side by side. And again, I just dip the corner of the point of the brush into the white, and that's how I go about putting in um, some dots. And, the, and, and purely up to you if that's something you want to do or not do. I think it, it kind of gives a little bit of spark. And I just go around the edges and do that. Does anybody have any questions? If you have questions, you could raise your hand or put a note in the chat saying that you'd like to ask for advice. Yeah, we can unmute. How are we doing, folks? Everyone's so busy painting. <laughs> it's always helpful too to step back. You might find that you have completely neglected one corner or one section of your painting, and you would like to um, put a little pop somewhere, whether it's a darker teal or turquoise, or if you want um, a brighter shadowing of orange somewhere, this gives you the chance if you step back to see where you might need to do that. Again, don't forget the size of your canvas. If you're putting the little dots on, sprinkle a few here and there on the sides because if it's hanging on the wall, you're going to see those sides. I'm going to flip mine upside. Oh, look at what I just found. So on my side, I had forgotten to put some of the burnt umber. I'm going to go back right now and grab some and fix that little empty spot there. And then when I'm done, I'll put a couple little white spots along so it doesn't look completely neglected. Mm 
We are planning to do another paint program in the month of December. And um, for anyone who hasn't been to visit the library, we have been doing make and takes as well, where we have crafts prepared and you just come in like you did for the paint party, pick up your materials, and then there's usually a video or instruction available to help you complete the make and take. And make and takes are great for rainy days and families with little people, but I have learned that grown-ups like to make and craft just as much as children, so I would never say it's a kid's craft. It's for anyone who wants to craft. So again, I just put white, but you could do the same thing with um, the teal and, or the aqua, I keep saying teal. You could do the same thing and put some spots and other colors. Um, that's completely up to you. 